For this part, we're gonna take a look at the vines that are growing up the side. Now, you don't necessarily need to have them growing, but it's really nice to be able to have all that happen very procedurally and easily so that you're not trying to do that by hand. There's a lot going on here, and you know it's not running completely real time for good reason because there is a lot happening as you're about to see. I'm just gonna go down, I'm just gonna grab that and I'm going to isolate it so we can look at this piece by piece and see really what's going on. So I've got part of the house here and it looks like the, the uh, vines are growing up the house. Well, they're not actually. Um, the vines themselves are uh, growing on something that is these, this vine target. And I'm just going to turn off the, uh, you know, the, the filter that filters out non-rendering objects because whenever I've got stand-in objects, I always set them in the properties to be non-rendering. So this is just a box that I have here. So it is, you know, if I turn off the show end result, it's just a box with a whole lot of verts in it. And then I did a conform and I conformed it onto the box. And I'll take this back to the uh, first frame so that it doesn't slow down. And you can see that it's conformed onto it. I've got it set up with just a bunch of the objects that to uh, run into, you know, collide with. Closest point is being used with some offset to offset it and then relaxed it. So I relaxed the, the solution. And then I actually did a second conform again just to conform it some more. You could do another relax again if you wanted to get it there. You could just run it like this. However, whatever works for you, you know, or again, you could make it out of you know just lower res objects and the like to be able to to have something to collide with that is going to be less expensive than having to collide with all the geometry that you're you're working with um, probably be best to collapse that too at some point so that it's not reliant on the house anymore it's just a collapsed mesh but i haven't done that so now let's take a look what's going on here we have this main spline going on. So this spline I've created myself. It is just a little tiny spline with two vertices down at the bottom of the stack. So you can see at the uh, bottom of the stack, it's just this. So uh, I left it like this, you know, and used an edit spline only so and show you the, you know, sort of the starting point. So it's just a little spline. Now I've used this little spline three times. So I've just made it sort of a, you know, a, a single grid snap long and it's giving me a starting point and then in this case i went through an edit spline and i drew out where i wanted it to be and kept it a little off the surface closer to the surface the better but you can see i'm even quite a ways off the surface in places and all this still works so the next one is this vine, the vine path i'm just going to go sorry that the uh, vine stock path so this is again the same little spline so this is just a copy of that original spline with just two knots in it and in this case i've thrown a normalized spline if i show the amount of knots in it you'll see that there's lots uh, put a thousand in here this is so that path to form has something to stretch now you really um you know you, you there, there's other ways i could have done this i guess but with the uh, path to form you'll when i now scrub you can see that that is now scrubbing along i'm just going to turn off the show knots so We've got path to form. You can see it's now just animated over time, over the length of time I want this to grow over. So this is now going to drive the uh, the stock. So the main, you know, sort of stock that goes up. I have another normalized spline on it. Now this one's not set to a count. It's set to a seg length. And the reason being here with the seg length is that as it grows, I don't want those vertices to be moving. I don't want them to be sliding along the surface. I want them, you know, just in a single place here. So that's actually going to determine how many extra little branches grow off it. So once I've got that growing up, I then have a noise on it, a lot noise, and of course, you know, then the extra vertices allows the noise to work properly. And I do a conform. And this conform is a shrink wrap to closest point. So it's finding the closest things in that list. And that's that vine target. So that's this object here that it's conforming to and sticking down to. I've got a little bit of an offset in there. And, you know, that's about all you really need to get this going. So that noise is crumpling it up and it's growing through the noise as it comes up. So you can see it kind of, you know, gets jaggy all over the place. And then, you know, conform is conforming it to closest points. And again, you know, the, the closer you put this to the, you know, the wall, the, the more kind of accurate to where it's going to be is. You can see it's kind of jumping up there 
on a bit of an angle. I kind of liked it. It wasn't too bad. But to get it to look a little bit better above the conform, I stuck in a spline relax. You know, the closer that original driving spline is, this one here, the less likely this is going to do some, you know, odd sort of uh, actions and, and whatnot as it goes up. Sorry, this one here is going to go up. So right now I've got little problems where you can see sometimes where it starts jumping around, see up here. So if I was a little closer, it wouldn't be that that's the conform kind of trying different things as it's growing it's not bad though it's actually pretty stable and the spline relax kind of relaxes you know helps it out a fair bit so that gets my main root going up so the the stock itself is a really simple object uh, we have that here it's just a cylinder and it's you know pretty straightforward so it's just got a whole lot of segments in it again you could animate these up so at the bottom of the stack it doesn't have as many or whatever based on maybe the path to form length right you know as it as it path to forms up it so i've got that on there and i'm animating it you know it, well it's staying sorry it's on auto so it's stretched a hundred percent on this this uh, spline that we've got here and so it just stays stretched with it so as that spline grows the the, the tube grows out with it right that the that cylinder is, is being stretched along that path with it so that looks pretty nice so the next thing is to get some branches going and so now we've got the branches here and you can see the branches growing out from it this is where it starts getting a little slow because there's a lot of dynamic things happening once you get this going okay it only goes to you know make sense right you know that it's it's going to take some time to do this so if we look at what these are is it's just a spline again okay so it's that same spline but this time what i've done is i've turned on the renderable properties so that it's rendering is just a little cylinder you know I, I try to find ways to make it taper better but it that seemed to be a little more troublesome to get it to taper properly and whatnot but i guess it's it might be possible some ways but i just didn't need it so i didn't bother i've got an x form on it now what you're going to notice with the x form is it's animated so the scale of the x form you can see has keys on it here so i'll open up our our curve editor and just head down to the object at the bottom here so you can see that this x form uh, under the modified the bezier scale is just scaling up so it's scaling up over time and they're getting longer and longer and longer as it goes on okay so that's kind of you know semi-important that one and then i've got the normalized spline again and this normalized spline is there to ensure that it has the correct amount of vertices in it so you can see i've got a seg length of four so what it's doing is is it's generating the the, the you know new knots in it okay as it goes up so you can see that it's it's generating new segments in it as it goes up there the array modifier is then on here and the array modifier then is got a retain orientation on it so that retain orientation is going to force it to point up because its original orientation in the world was pointing up so it's trying to point up i've got some a little bit of rotation on it to you know get it better sort of the direction that i wanted and down below i have some rotation you know uh, randomized rotation to make it feel like it's you know they're little vines you know reaching out but part of the trick then here is you'll notice in the uh, array and it looks like i've left them all on linear but what i'm doing is i'm having to animate with the scale as incremental so this is just under the transform incremental scale so i've animated it so as it's getting longer and longer the value is getting closer and closer to 100% of that length that I had scaled it up to, okay, that I'd set it at. And so now you can see that they're, they're you know, reaching out. So that is kind of part of the trick is animating that scale because if you don't, effectively, they'll always be there. So if I were to crank that up, you're going to have ones that just sort of pop on and we need them growing out of that growth spline and it's it's coming out of it so it's set to spline and it's set to grow out of the knots so if we go back to the, the stock path that second normalize is the one that is controlling the amount of those that grow out so you can see i can just change that and make those segments longer and i'll get less of those growing out of it so at each and every single knot it's growing out one of these.
Again, segment seg length is important here because if you watch it grow, you can see that it's just sort of adding, as it grows along, it adds a new knot, which adds new uh, branches coming off of it. So it's growing out, and again, same sort of thing. I've gone, it's growing out of it, so I've got a noise on it to noise it up and make it look all sort of rough. I stick a conform on it, and once again, same sort of thing, shrink wrap to closest point, a little bit of offset on it to offset it. And then again, a spline relax just to kind of uh, clean it up a little bit and make it look a little more natural and everything. So now you can see that I've got these, these growing out and sort of reaching out and trying to figure out what they need to attach to. It's kind of fun to watch them grow. So once I've got that, then I need to think about leaves. And so I've got leaves here, and those leaves are really simple. They are just a plane with an X-form modifier to push the pivot down to the bottom. Basically, I'm pushing all the geometry over until the pivot's at the bottom. Taper, vertex weld to weld off the vertices that are there. Uh, a couple of bends, a shell modifier to give it a touch of thickness. X-form modifier, which is just scaling it back down again. I guess I could have done it at the bottom, but it was kind of easy to get at the size I wanted to start out with. And then an array modifier again. So this X-form essentially is the end size that I wanted. I wouldn't scale things, by the way. I scaled the X-forms gizmo to get it down to the right size. So then with the leaves, you know, what I've got again is I've, I've got an array, I've got a retain orientation again, so it tries to retain that orientation with a bunch of random rotation going on, just to sort of randomize those nicely. And some original rotation, you can see I've had to rotate them to be the right way around from however they were initially, you know, uh, there. And then the same thing, I've had to animate their scale value so that they grow. So as it comes out, you can see it's lagging a little bit behind because these are growing out of this array with spline again and just count. So I'm saying grow me, you know, in this case, four on each branch and it's growing four on each branch. You could probably go by not again, you know, if you wanted, but it seemed to produce too many. So I just said, gave it myself a count and it's on those little splines so and it's just timed right it took a little bit of doing to get it timed right but as it grows out now they start showing up on those new splines and and kind of you know showing up and growing in as it grows so the flowers are exactly the same thing flowers are the same result here except it's just a plane again the X form to shove you know, the geometry down so the pivots at the base. I threw in a taper, threw in a vertex weld. So guess what, I started with a leaf. Bends, X form, shell, and an array. And the array is uh, on phylotaxis with just a few on there. So I get this nice little flower going. Again, you could collapse all this and it would probably speed things up a little bit, but I like keeping my stack intact as long as I possibly can. And then an array modifier again. This is the exact same thing as the leaves. It's on spline, it's on count. You know, in this case, I've just got two per um, that are growing up. And again, some randomizations, a little bit of local rotation to get it the right way around. And then I'm an animating that incremental scale happening and it's locked for all axes. So all axes. And so you can see it's kind of growing in a little bit after all the leaves. So the leaves appear first, or I guess you could say the stalk grows up, the extra little branches grow out, the leaves then show up, then the flowers start to grow after that and it slowly grows all the way to the top looking like that. What's nice is at any point in time, you can grab the, you know, the spline and it becomes completely dynamic. You can see you can just drive it around and it'll find the surface and everything else. You know, when it gets full length, it starts getting a little bit slow with all of that happening because I've got a lot of little branches happening and everything. But it's possible if you just want this stationary and not animated just to create it in a growth state and then move the vertices around and it'll grow and reposition itself on the objects that it's designed to connect with. So nice and simple the way that works. So the lantern is the exact same thing. It has growth coming up and it grows out and out and around the lantern. So I've got a, a lantern model and I've got this collision object again. So same thing, except this is just a capsule you know, that I've 
pieced around and just placed around the whole thing, conform to closest point to all the parts of it, and a bit of a relax on there just to soften it out. So I've got something that's simple to collide with. And then it's all the same uh, idea that's going on here. It's the exact same setup, except the initial spline was done a little bit more automatic. I didn't have to place it like this. I actually just used a helix and conformed it, you know, sorry, dropped the noise on it, conformed it onto it with a normalized spline just to even things out with a little bit of a spline relax. And it looks like it's growing up. So now you get this nice growth coming around and eventually it uh, then you know sprouts all the flowers at the very top and it grows this head of flowers on top of it as it gets covered up. So it's the same setup and it's just a matter of playing around with the keying and get those keys in the right places to get this to grow. I uh, hope you enjoyed that one. It was a lot of fun to figure out and it's really effective for really growing anything like this organic over a surface. You know, it's a, it works. I'm, I'm going to try it on all kinds of things and I'm sure it'll produce really good results.